Okay, and then under personnel administration, well, most of the costs here are fixed, but let's we can run through them real quick. Um, the employee separation cost we left it at the same that it has been at, and I will point out with that line and also with the sick leave buyback program, if there is any funds left in either of those two lines they are not just um, sent back to the unassigned fund balance the board can vote at that time to put them into the compensated um, absence trust fund that we have uh, so that's if those are over budget or under budget or whatever we can use the money in that fashion um, the buyback line i did increase you can see that in 2016 the individuals who uh, did the sick leave buyback, um, that line was maxed out. And then in 17 this year, we actually were at 204,411. So I increased that to 200,000 so that hopefully we'll have um, the funds there to cover the buyback. We don't know those numbers until January, so it's hard right now. Everyone has to turn their election forms in to finance by the beginning of October, but then once we find out the health insurance rates and all that, the buyback program, Mr. Waddell will probably ask me that if I can predict, right, to explain to the public what that is. That is in, um, for the union, it's in all of their contracts in the uh, collective bargaining agreements for their sick time, and it's all over the place in regards to, most of them it's 400 hours, anything over the 400 hours that they have, they can sell back to the town. Um, it can be used to, go into their uh, 457 plans. It can pay for health insurance, dental insurance, life insurance, any of their portions of the insurances that they're responsible for, it can go towards that. And it can also be used uh, to be converted to vacation time. No one really does that. There's no dollar value attached to that, but it is an option. It's also in the non-union, um, in, in the personnel policy the same thing that they can sell back leave time um, over a certain number of hours I believe it's 240 for the individuals who work 40 hours and anything over 210 for the for the um, non-union who work 35 hours so that's kind of what the buyback program does there let's see the merit pay line is down we put in two percent and that would be up to the board's discretion on how that's used for non-union employees and then Social Security, Medicare, all the remainder of the lines there are literally driven by any of the wage lines in the budget. So they have kind of gone up. Most of them have gone up. Uh, the largest one that went up was the police, and it went up 11.75. And I think that when the police was here, the biggest increase in their budget was wage-related, which in turn was related to collective bargaining agreements that had passed by the voters um, in previous years. So. Those are all, everything else in this section is literally driven by wages throughout the remainder of the budget, except for, for the cemetery and library. Two questions. Rick, Phil. Yeah, I do. And, and, and real quickly, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm looking at your uh, uh, New Hampshire retirement system, police and firemen. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, one point, almost $9 million combined. And we talk about our issues with the state, Mr. Chairman. Just real quick, if you're taking 10% of our calls on state property, right there is 180,000 bucks. We're out the door. And that's just 10%. And I know in the summer, I've seen data that it's 20%. So I'm confident we're around 10. Just right there is a bucket, almost 200 grand of juice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And that uh, that's out of our control, right? How much? Set by the state. Yes. Set by the state. Set by the state. And the last year, they had 13% reap return on their investment correct a so. little above that but yes yeah 13 percent they had and, and, and you raise a good point on this mr chairman because i i think they're overcharging us if you look at 20 years and we've done those math before I, I i think they're they're taking more than they should but that's just another another day's discussion now you said on the uh, merit raises you have twenty five thousand two hundred ninety two. am i reading that correctly you are and that would be it's literally just taking all of the non-union positions with the exception of the town manager and the assistant town manager and adding two percent to what they were being paid as of august whatever when i did this budget which would have already incorporated the 1.65 oh, okay. yeah all right okay well, and uh, i would 
Okay. Like when you're ready, I would not vote on eight these sections until we're ready to vote on the whole budget. Just okay. Because it will change if you decide to change any of the wage lines, and I know that was something that you were going to revisit as a board. All right. So I would recommend that we do not vote on anything here. Thank you very much. 